Welcome to Scrapbooking Beautiful Layouts by Lockie Creations. Hello everyone and Happy New Year. It's Lockie Creations back with a new year and a new video. Today's video and the next few videos to follow will be focusing on how in the new year I will be embarking on the journey of introducing journals into my crafting arena. So today's video will be the first part on how I went from a happy planner style journal planner and create a custom journal with this happy planner as my inspiration. This happy planner is one that has the nine disc along the side. These are medium sized discs. So I'm going to be using this as just my template for my planner and I'm actually going to be creating my planner using a hard bound books cover. So this planner is just going to be the base that I'm going to use and I'm going to measure my all of my pages based on the size of this happy planner. This planner is the size where the cover is a nine and a half inches by seven and a half and the inserts will be nine and a quarter by seven. So I have purchased the happy planner tool that will allow me to cut the mushroom inserts. So the book that I purchased to be my cover for my journal is The Trader's Ruin by Aaron Beatty. I was so fortunate enough to find this very well rated book at Dollar Tree. I liked it because I love purple. So I'm going to just hold on to the purple hard bound book because I will be definitely using that uh, maybe some of the pages if I can bring myself to rip apart this beautiful book maybe using that some of those pages in this journal uh, but I definitely will be using this book cover for the front and back and some inserts for my planner journal so let's get started the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to cut apart this book cover now this book cover is one that is very, very beautiful. The colors, the pinks and purples and blues are what, and florals are really what attracted me to this. This is an interesting read. I am getting into the book as well, but I think this is a perfect, perfect start for my journal. So the first thing that I've done is I've selected some metallic glitter cardstock that I've had in my stash for a while and I'm going to cut them down to the nine and a quarter by seven size and those will be used as inserts so I actually am going to at this point I believe I have selected eight of those but I'm going to go back and later do four so what I've done is I've cut them down to the size of a nine and a quarter by seven and I used one of the inserts from my template planner to be a guide so I cut that down and then I went ahead with my punch and punched the mushroom inserts if you will into my paper so that's going to allow me to have the perfect size inserts so what I'm explaining here is that you just have to make sure it, if you're using paper like me that's old, that's very thick, that you get it in place. And this tool is really nice because it has lines to kind of guide you through. So I took one of the, one of the little uh, scrap pieces of paper and I just created this little bookmark insert just showing you there how you can also use some of the scraps that you are cutting down to also be potential inserts for your book. So this tool was definitely a good investment. I would uh, definitely recommend if you are going to get into planners, you do purchase that as well as a corner rounder. So I wanted to round the corners just to make it look like a tab. So that bookmark is something that I can use in the book that I'm going to build. So just showing you there what potential things you can do. You can actually use the journal that you purchase and add to that journal. But in this case, I am going to create a whole brand new journal using these products, okay? The disc that I'm going to use for this book will be purple, and I will be showing those in 
a later part of this tutorial series. So I'm just removing uh, the one sheet that I created as well as the little bookmark. And again, just explaining how those come easily in and out of those discs that come with the Happy Planner, which are my inspiration for this planner. Now, this will be my first planner slash journal that I have done start to finish in a while. So I'm very excited for this project. So I'm going to go ahead and cut down my 12 by 12 pieces of cardstock into that nine and a quarter by seven inch size so that I can have those be inserts. I'm going to make sure that I just trim out the side that have imperfections. This cardstock that I'm using was a part of a paper stack that I've had for many, many years. So I want to make sure that I do not include the imperfections from the rips of the page. So I'm just explaining that as I cut my paper down, I want to make sure that I cut it off on the side that would take those imperfections off. So I'm cutting that initial size at a seven inch which would be the width of my inserts and then i'm going to trim it down to a nine and a quarter which will be the height of my inserts then again i'm showing you how i will use my happy planner punch to punch out those holes that will go easily into those discs of my journal in there, I'm showing you those guidelines that come with the punch, which just make it so easy to line up. If you get the nine and a quarter inch size, they will fit perfectly into those slits. There's other slits as well, uh, depending on what type of inserts you want to add. So again, you see they fit and they fit perfectly inside my planner. Okay. So let's take those out because that is not going to be what this page is used for. So now I've gone ahead and I've cut down the majority of my paper and you can see I used alternating purple, pink, and blue colors that go very well with that very beautiful book cover of A Trader's Ruin. And I'm going to go ahead and cut those out just showing you that process again so you get a very good idea of how you can create these type of inserts using your own paper or cardstock. Now, of course, this cardstock is a little thick. This cutter has the ability to punch, excuse me, the punch has the ability to punch three sh thinner sheets at a time, but because my cardstock is thick with glitter, I only want to cut one at a time. So here are the inserts, the initial inserts that I will be using for my custom journal. And again, right there, I believe I have eight sheets, but I will go back later and cut the remaining four because my thought is that after I cut these out, I think I want to use these as dividers to divide out my months of the year. So my thought for this journal will be, this will be a journal that, it will be a journal slash planner if you will, I'll probably put a couple planner pages in the, just in the initial part of these journals, but I definitely want to make it more of a journal. Okay, so now what I want to do is go ahead and start to create my book covers. So I'm just going to separate the happy planner cover and I'm measuring that again just to make sure I got the dimensions right and that is a nine and a half by seven and a half for the cover so I'm just testing it out kind of seeing how the placement will work and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this book cover out into five pieces I'm going to cut out the front flap the back flap the front cover, the back cover, and then the spine. And I'm gonna use all of those in my journal, but I'm gonna focus primarily, my initial focus is going to be on that front and that back cover because I want to create the cover for my journal. 
so I'm just going in and I'm just pressing down the creases on that book cover so that I can just have an easier guide for when I am trimming those out again this is a, just a very lovely book and interesting book too an interesting read it's more of a romantic thriller kind of set uh, in a royal type setting so uh, kind of one of those love stories that go wrong so very interesting book it is one in a trilogy the first book in that series is uh, I believe the traitor's kiss this one that I picked up is the traitor's ruin which is the second in the series and then the final book uh, which I have not checked out I uh, can't remember the name of it, but um, yes, it's it's a three-part book. So uh, this may inspire, you know, three years worth of journals. <laughs> so stay tuned. So now, as you can see, the book cover that I've cut down for the front and the back, they're probably about an inch and a half short of the whole entire nine and a half size that I need so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use cardstock to just fill in that difference and I was just going through my stash and looking for cardstock that I liked and I found this darker purple that has almost a swirly uh, type of design which I think goes very good with the theme of this book in what my journal will be so I'm gonna cut uh, this sh this piece that I have I'm gonna cut it down and um, you'll see me here cutting um, different strips of paper um, that I'm gonna use and I'm not gonna use this whole sheet for that because I only just need about an inch and a half for each side so what I'm gonna do is cut out about probably about two inches for each side and that's what well, I'll use you know an inch two inches for one side for my front cover about two inches for my back cover to fill in that difference okay so I'm just trimming that down just thinking about kind of how I want to place it and I want to make sure that it blends well. I don't want this to look too arts and crafty. I want it to be homemade, but I want it to look nice and professional as well. I haven't quite decided how I want to clean these edges up. I know I don't want to have just the straight hard lines on the edge of the book. So I'm just going to ponder for a moment on how I can decorate that. I kind of consider it maybe using a... a a uh, piece of ribbon just to blend those two edges together and I decide not to go with that uh, but you'll 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 see here in a bit I'm gonna figure out how I want to tie those edges in together but initially I went ahead and just taped down uh, the edge of that purple strip of paper and adhered the top of that book cover to that paper so I'm grabbing my tape runner and going to tape that down and I'm going to go ahead and just add that corner of that top layer of my cover that I trimmed out from the book right at that nine and a quarter or excuse me, this was from seven and a half, seven and a half line mark. So again, I just making sure and I got it at right on money at the right size. I have not cornered the ends yet because I'm trying to think about how do I cover that harsh. I just know I don't want that harsh line there. So I'm going to think about it for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and this is where I went ahead and off camera cut out off that piece of tape that I had done I decided that I was going to use this this decorative border punch to just give that edge a decorative a decorative edge and that was very very 
nice that was exactly what i wanted to make it not look so harsh so hindsight i probably should have did that to the back edge too because i just wanted to reinforce it and to have it be a little bit thicker so now i'm going to go ahead and tape or actually i'm going to use glue in for this part of it i'm going to glue that decorative edge right on just on the edge of my front book cover just because I don't want to cover up the title I just again want it to be just to blend in with that cover and to be that piece that will be punched out to go into my book so to reinforce that I am going to go ahead and add that leftover purple strip of paper and I'm going to just tape and glue that down right over that area where my punches will be now in hindsight I probably should have used that decorative border and maybe done something to that page because I am going to laminate this to go into my book and at this point I really hadn't considered the fact that here's an opportunity to maybe have something on that back that would be permanently affixed but I wasn't thinking about that at this point so anyway I'm going to go ahead and trim it down so that I do have it at the proper size to be my cover and I'm going to go ahead and do the same process for the back so this is going to give me my front and my back page for my journal. Now with the back, I'm doing the same exact process. I just have to make sure that I remember to put it on the right side. So I'm flipping it over here and making sure I get it on the right side. I'm going to glue it down just like I glued the first piece just to that edge. And then when I get it on there, I am going to tape on another strip to reinforce it and trim it down to the proper seven and a half inch size so I did have a slight imperfection on the bottom where my paper trimmer is getting old so it does not trim flawlessly so I did have a slight imperfection but it's at on the back and really don't care about that so I'm going to go with it as is. And yes, I, I could have decorated the back end too, but yeah, it's okay. It is okay. It will probably be covered up or I'll do something with it. Let's see how it evolves. So now I am just measuring again that back piece down to a seven and a half inch size so that it, it will be the proper size to be the backing of my journal and I'm just comparing the two sides and because I had to do some altering I, I have to just slightly cut a little bit off of the uh, one of the ends just to kind of straighten up the paper where I added it but that's not going to matter too much because I am going to laminate both of these so that lamination the extra tenth of an inch or so that I'm trimming off here will be made up by my laminator sheets okay so now that I have both my front and my back cover my next step is going to corner punch those ends because I want them to be corner punched just like my template covers so I'm taking my corner puncher and giving them a punch and I'm going to repeat this process for both the front and the back covers now I am going to laminate this and you may be thinking well why did I cut that before I laminated it and it's because I want the book cover and the the portion that's going to go over the top to be the same shape so my laminator sheet i'm not going to go all the way to the edge I, i'm only i'm going to leave a very very tiny little thin border and so i want both of those to be punched 
Okay, so at this point, I have grabbed my laminator and I'm allowing it to heat up. It takes about three minutes to heat up. So you see the red line there <clears throat> is telling me that it's not quite ready yet. You notice I have a, a wooden uh, piece under there and don't laugh. It is an old drawer cover and that is a perfect wooden piece for when I am doing any type of heat uh, tool, either heat pressing or iron on. It will protect my plastic table. Anyway, these laminator sheets, they have one side that's kind of fixed down so I'm going ahead and I'm putting my item that's going to be laminated in that sheet and just lining up where it needs to go and at first I was putting it all the way to the edge but I decide nope that's that's not right I want to put it in the middle of the sheet that way I can make sure every all the corners and everything are nice and adhered down so I'm just placing that in the laminator pouch and getting out all the wrinkles and now I see the smiley face at the top it's green it's telling me it's hot enough it's ready to go so this is a very simple laminator purchased it from Amazon it went, and it came in a bundle with all the sheets various size sheets and other things with the uh, a, a corner puncher a ruler a paper trimmer all that okay so how I'm gonna laminate this I'm just going to slide from the end that is is permanently affixed you just slide your sheet through the laminator and it does its thing it's going a little bit slow and believe it or not I have sped up this video so <laughs> it is it actually is going even slower than you are seeing it here in this video so I didn't speed it up anymore here just because it's already sped up because I want you to just kind of get an idea of how that lamination process works but as you can see it doesn't take very long even though it goes through a little slow there's a perfect laminated page okay so before I trim that out I'm just gonna sit that to the side and allow it to cool off a little bit while I work on the back page for my journal cover so again I'm just going to insert it into the pouch and make sure it's nice and flat and no wrinkles and then I'm gonna go ahead and send her through my laminator because she's still hot from the first job so now while that one goes through the laminator and this is where I realized oh probably should have did something to make the edge a little bit prettier there too because yeah I could have opportunity to do, do something with that but I'll, I'll figure it out so now I'm gonna go ahead and trim down each of my sides and my laminator did come with a paper trimmer but I'm just using my standard one that I already use just because I, I'm familiar with where the lines are I can see them a little bit better so I'm just leaving maybe even less than a tenth of an inch or so or a quarter of an it's smaller than a quarter of an inch but around each one of the sides and just to you know have a little bit extra on each side so this is where I initially started with my We Are Memory Keepers uh, corner punch and I start to punch those corners because it's always nice to have a punched corner when you're laminating so that you don't have that sharp edge. The first the We Are Memory Keeper didn't seem like it was thick enough to go straight through. So then I abandoned that one and I went with the corner punch that came with the laminator sheet. And that one cut better but it... I didn't it, I didn't think it was rounded enough because I used the other rounder to round the actual pages before I laminated them I just wanted it to be a little bit cohesive so you do see me there now grabbing my initial corner puncher and repunching those and that worked really well so there is my first page of my planner I'm just lining it up against my template page to make sure it's pretty consistent size. And that looks good. So now I'm going to go ahead and put that page into my puncher. And I'm being very careful to make sure I line things up accordingly. And so one lesson learned here for me is I probably should have punched both the front and the back at the same time 
I did not, and it's okay. I got them, got them pretty, pretty lined up pretty well, but it just took me, you know, a lot of measuring back and forth and eyeballing and kind of hoping and praying that it worked. But hindsight, twenty twenty. Next time, I'll punch front and back together. So, you do see that this sheet that I created is just slightly larger than the template, and that's because I laminated it. And I'm okay with that because I actually like the fact that my my covers cover up the tabs because I will be adding tabs in my book as well. Okay, so there you have it. Hope you have liked this video. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for other parts where we will continue to decorate this album. Be blessed.